Today we're going to start 8.4, which is being able to graph rational functions. We're going to take a look at two things. Number one, the basic parent rational function, and number two is being able to apply transformations to rational functions. The parent rational function is just 1 over x. We've graphed this before. You make a table, you plug in values for x. This is what it ends up looking like. Basically, you plug in 1 for x, you're going to get 1 for y. You plug in 2 for x, you're going to get 1 half for y. You plug in 1 half for x, you're going to get 2 for y because you're just doing 1 divided by those numbers. Same thing happens with the negatives. This graph here is called a hyperbola. This hyperbola actually has two asymptotes, kind of like what the exponential logarithmic functions had. They just had one. This one in this case has two. It has a vertical asymptote at x equals 0 here, and then it's going to have a horizontal asymptote y equals 0 here. The reason why these happen is this vertical asymptote x equals 0. What this means is that our graph, or the values that we have for this graph for our x values, we can never actually put in a value of 0, because if we were, we would get this expression 1 divided by 0, and we're not allowed to divide by 0. So what this is saying is that we can use any other value for x that we want to, with exception to 0. So this vertical asymptote at 0 is really saying that our domain is going to be every number such that x cannot be 0, which means it can be every number but 0. So this vertical asymptote is actually saying that we can take every number and plug it in to the input, plug it into x, except for 0. The horizontal asymptote, on the other hand, is saying that as we plug in all these values that we're allowed to plug in for x in terms of our domain, Every number that we plug into x, we're going to get some random value for y, but that y value is never going to be 0. That's why we have a horizontal asymptote, is whatever number you plug in for x, if it's 1, 15, negative 92, you're going to get some kind of no whole number, integer, rational number, but the number that you're never going to get will be zeros, and you cannot do 1 divided by some number and actually get 0. So we're never going to be able to have an output which is what this is saying, we're never going to actually have an output of zero. When we talk about being able to transform these functions, we can transform these functions the same way that we've done transformations on everything else. If we, re, we remember this equation that we talked about, a times f of x minus h over b plus k, we've used this for every type of transformation. a was the vertical stretch compression, the reflection across the x, h was the left or right, K was the up or down, B is the, your horizontal com stretch of compression or reflection over the Y. This is the same exact thing down here, but applied to a rational function. Now, if we take a look, some of this stuff may look like it's in a, in a different location, but it's all the exact same thing. When we talk about the vertical stretch of compression, we have to put that out in front of our actual function, where our function really is 1 over x. And if we put the a value out, a times 1 over x, this is kind of like saying this a is a fraction, a over 1, which to multiply fractions, you just multiply across, which becomes a over x. So this a really is still out in front, but when we put it out in front, we can really just put it up in the numerator. The x minus h, that minus the h may look like it's in the denominator when it's supposed to be in the numerator, but anything that we have inside here is always supposed to affect the x. And to be able to show it affect the x, it's got to be inside really parentheses with the x. Well, the x is in the denominator, and to put it in parentheses with the x, that means that h has to be in the denominator as well. And then k is just the same thing that's been, it's always been the outside after the function, adding or subtracting, same thing going on here. So if you know that that a needs to go out in front, it still needs to go out in front. The h has to go with the x, it still has to go with the x, the k is after the function, it's still after the function. It's the same thing, it just looks a little bit different. So if we wanted to talk about being able to name these transformations. Basically all you're doing is you're talking about can you name the a, the h, and the k. So if we see this first function, g of x equals 1 over x minus 3. The one difference that we have here is that it's x minus 3. So this is going to represent our transformation. The actual h value. And remember, every time that we see something, it's inside with the x, it's always the opposite of what we see. So when it's h minus 3, that means that our h value is actually going to be a positive 3, which that h being a positive 3, the horizontal translation, left or right, means that's actually going to be right 3. So what we need to do is we need to take our graph 
and it does say graph, so that implies that we're going to need points. We can take our graph, and we just have to move those points to the right three. So we make a coordinate plane. We're going to start with the original graph, which if we remember some of those points, we really just need a couple points. And if we're not sure what those couple points are, we identify the parent, which was 1 over x, and then we can just go through and make a table for it. So we pick some nice values, easy values, like maybe 1 half. We plug it in, 1 divided by 1 half was the 2. We pick 1, 1 divided by 1 is 1, and then 2, 1 divided by 2 is just going to be 1 half. So we get 1 half, 2, 1, 1, and then 2, 1 half. And then we can do the same thing with the negatives. Well, if we change all of these over to negatives, that means all of these are just going to become negatives as well. So negative 1 half, negative 2, negative 1, negative 1, and negative 2, negative 1 half. And those are the points that we can use. We just have to take all those points, move them to the right 3. So we can either do that on our table here, and just basically take all the x's, add 3 to them, or just we can count over 3. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and then 1, 2, 3. And we get that there. Another thing that may help us in terms of being able to move these is we also want to be able to move the asymptotes. Our two asymptotes that we have are going to be the y equals 0 here and x equals 0 here. This is a horizontal line. You can't really move a horizontal line 3, so we're going to leave it where it's at. But the vertical line, x equals 0, we can move that 3 so that it gets moved over here. An easy way to think about this in terms of being able to move it if we're not quite sure how to move it, if we're not quite sure how to go through and actually move these the lines around, what you can do is take the point that that line goes through on the, the axis. So if we talk about y equals 0, well, it's 0, 0 is the point that we have. We move it to the right 3, 1, 2, 3, and we need to draw that same horizontal line through that point there. We can do the same thing for x equals 0. We need to take this point here. We can move it right 3, and then all we have to do is draw that now vertical line that goes through that point. And so every time that we go through and we draw an asymptote, we want to draw it with a dotted line to be able to show this is an asymptote. It's not part of our graph, but this is an asymptote, x equals 3. Well, the horizontal one's going to stay that way, so now we can just go through and draw the graph that goes through that. We can do that same thing for this other one. Move it to the right 3, move it to the right 3, and then this one will move to the right 3, and there's our second part of our graph. B, we can do the same exact thing. We just have to identify the transformation first. It starts off as a negative 2, so that means that our k value is going to equal negative 2, which would be a down 2 movement. So we can go through, we can draw the graph. From here, we can start with those same points. So you think about saying what values can I divide by 1. Well, we know if we do 1 divided by 1, it gets us 1. 2 divided by 1 is 1 half. Half divided by 1 is going to be 2. And then we can do that same thing for the other one. We just have the negatives. So negative 1 half would be negative 2, negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 1 half. Basically, we're just using these values over again to be able to plot these points here. Then we just need to move it down to, well, let's work with our intercept or our asymptotes first. So we have the vertical one, x equals 0, which goes to that point on our, on our axis. We just have to drop that point down to, which is going to go down here. We have to draw a now a vertical line that goes through that point. Then we do that same exact thing. So since this line doesn't really change any, it's a vertical line, we do that same exact thing now for the horizontal line. We have to drop that point down to that it goes through. There's that one, and now we need to draw a horizontal line that goes through that. Now this horizontal line does cross one of our points, but remember that is the point of our parent function. We haven't actually drawn in the other points yet. So now we take all these points, we drop them down two, drop it down two, and drop it down two, and we can see that it's still you know, getting close to that, but it's not going to intersect it. And we can do the same thing here, drop it down two, drop it down two, and then we can draw our graph going through there. So there's our, there's our parent function that we have as the dots, and then here's our new function being moved down to. The last thing we're going to take a look at is being able to do this for multiple transformations. We want to do the same exact thing. 
Let's describe the transformations, the asymptotes. Now we're just going to talk about being able to sketch it. So we're not actually going to go through and worry about being able to plot the points because it uses the word sketch. You don't have to actually plot all those points. And then we're going to state the domain and range, which the domain and range is really just going to come at this point from the, the asymptotes. So if we can name the asymptotes, we can name the domain and range. So we take a look at this first one, the parent function that we have is just going to be 1 over x. So the transformations that we're going to get will be the x plus 3, which means that our h is going to be negative 3, and this minus 5 here, our k is negative 5. Well, h being a negative 3 is going to be left 3, and k means that we're going to take the negative 5, we're going to move it down 5. So when we go through and we draw our graph, First thing that we want to think about is being able to move our asymptotes. We know that we have to take it and move it left 3, down 5. Well, our original asymptotes, x equals 0, y equals 0, they both go through the point 0, 0. So let's just move that point to be able to move our vertical and horizontal lines. Down left 3 and down 5. So left 3, down 5 takes us to that point right there. We'll need a for the x equals 0, we'll need the vertical line that basically goes through that one. So we have the vertical line that goes through there, and then we basically have the horizontal line that is also going to go through there. Now to be able to name these lines, we're just talking about for this one, it was x equals 0 because it goes through 0 on the, the x-axis, y equals 0 because it goes through 0 on the y-axis. We can do that same exact thing here. We moved it left 3. Well, it went over 1, 2, 3, that it should go through negative 3 on the x, so this now becomes x equals negative 3. There's our 1 asymptote, and we move this one down 5, so it's still really going through that negative 5 on the y, so y equals negative 5. There's our two asymptotes. Now to be able to go through and sketch the graph. Well, our original graph basically looked like this, coming close to both of those inner asymptotes, going through here, coming close to both of these asymptotes. Well, if we just move that down and left, we just have to take this curve, move it down and left. Remember, this one was bottom left of the two asymptotes, so it's still going to be bottom left of the two asymptotes. This one was top right of the two asymptotes, so it's still going to be top right of the two asymptotes. And there's all for A. Let's take a look over at C. C's got a couple things going on with it. We have a negative one, up top, we have the x minus 4, and we have the plus 2. This is our a is going to equal negative 1. Our h from this, remember it's with the x, so we see the opposite. Our h is positive 4, and our k is going to be positive 2. a being negative 1, this is vertical stretch compression, or it's a reflection. Since it's a negative, that means that we are going to reflect it over the x. h is positive 4, so that means that we are going to move it right 4. And then k is 2 means that we are going to move it up to. And now we can go through and talk about our asymptotes. Well, when we move our asymptotes, remember you can we think about that point zero, zero, because there's our vertical asymptote, there's our horizontal asymptote, is we need to reflect it over the x, move it right to, or right four and up to. The first one that we want to deal with, order of operation says you always deal with the multiplication first. So this one is going to happen first, and then these two will happen after that, the right four and up to. So let's move this, reflect it over the x. Well, it's not really going to move anywhere. So we move it right one, two, three, four, and up two, and it's going to get moved there. And we can draw that vertical line that goes through this point. And we can draw the horizontal one that also goes through that point. And so there's going to be our two asymptotes that we can name. Basically, this one got moved right 4, so it becomes x equals 4. This one got moved, the horizontal one got moved up 2, so it's going to be y equals 2. There's our two asymptotes. Now, we just have to sketch this graph. Well, remember, parent function was top right, bottom left. When we move this, then... We're going to have to first reflect it over the x-axis. Well, when we reflect this over the x-axis, this one here is really going to get moved up like that. This one down here reflected over the x-axis is going to really get moved like that. And now we have to move it right 4 and up 2. So instead of being in the top 
right now is technically in the bottom right. So when we move it over, it's going to get moved over like this. And then this one, which was in the bottom left, got moved up to the top left. We move it right and up. It's still going to be in the top left in relationship to our two asymptotes. All right, this last one, the one that we skipped, B. I would like you guys to try this one on your own. We'll go over it in class tomorrow. Identify the transformations and then move the asymptotes. Name the domain, the range. We forgot to name the domain and range. To be able to go through, let's take this one for C. If you want to name the domain and range, basically you're talking about what x values can the graph not reach, what y values can the graph not reach. Well, your domain is just going to be every possible value other than the asymptote, which we said x equals 4. So our domain is going to be every possible value for x with exception to our asymptote which means x will never be able to be equal to 4. We take a look at this. If you plug 4 in the denominator, negative 1 over 4 minus 4. 4 minus 4 is that undefined value. So our domain, it cannot be equal to 4. Our range is going to be the same exact thing. It's going to be every y with exception to the value of our asymptote. So with exception to y being equal to 2.